Hey guys, I want to show you how we prepare our substrate for the applying of a stone veneer or a cultured stone. You can't just lick it and stick it on the wall. The walls need to be prepared. Uh, in other videos we show how we make our mortar and everything, but none of that matters if you have, say, this is beautiful, brand new form poured concrete wall, but on the inside of a lot of forms is form oil. And when the, when the concrete cures against that uh, form, it's often uh, too shiny and just not something that your mortar is going to bite into. So what we do is either take a cup grinder. I'll put links to all the things we use uh, on an Amazon link here below. Either a cup grinder and just scruff off that kind of a shiny surface and get it into all these pock marks. Then, after we've hit it with a cup grinder, if you don't have a cup grinder, this is slick. It's a pretty angry, aggressive wire brush on a, on a stick. And you can see right there, I just dragged down that and I've opened up a whole bunch of those pocks. That's what the mortar is going to be able to bite into and make that fantastic bond. Okay. So we've, we've scruffed it down either with a wire brush or a cup grinder. Then we take a pressure washer and we carefully, methodically blast off any of the dust any of the additional stuff, and that also opens up more. Now we've got a raw, rough surface. Uh, you gotta go through and pop all the uh, form tie spots too. You've got a nice, raw, rough, clean surface to apply your mortar to. Then, as you've seen in other videos, we butter the back of the stone, and we butter the wall, and pound it on. So, other places where the wall's been sheathed, uh, that's where we apply our wire lath. Before you put the wire lath on, you want it to be covered with a house wrap of some sort. House wrap is built, it's kind of a two-way system, it's built to allow moisture out, to go out, but not let moisture penetrate in. It's kind of a one-way system. What they recommend, and I like this system, behind stone you have a layer of house wrap laid with the with the printing faced out and then another layer of house wrap overlaid on that double wrap with the printing in that's what we have here there's two layers and that allows so if any moisture came in through the stone it would permeate through that one layer of house wrap and hopefully get captured and run down in that middle we're talking about a microscopic amount of moisture but that's all it takes to make a lot of issues. Uh, so we do two layers of house wrap and then the wire lath. The, the wire lath, it is best if you handle this carefully from the beginning. First off, if you don't, you will be bleeding all over the place and you look like you got attacked by a herd of cats. But the other reason is uh, if you pick it up rough from the uh, lumber yard or if they grab it with a uh, forklift or something and they bend it in some way, this is never, ever, ever going to go on flat once those bends are in it. And then you parge your stone on, put the stone, and it's bouncing back and you'll have stones fall off. So it's important to keep it as smooth and crisp, just like out of the factory, when you start. And there's also an up and a down. Now this is going to be hard to see here, but when you have lath in your hand, you'll notice that each one of these wires has kind of a, just like my hand angle is, they're kind of turned up. That, imagine if you were, if this was a cheese grater, you'd put your cheese on it and you'd scrub down. If you put it upside down, you can actually see it's shinier this way too, but if you put it upside down, now actually it wouldn't catch. The reason this is important, and in some states it's actually a, a, a building code to put it the right way up, is as you apply your mortar to this wall, it actually bites the mortar and pulls it back in. If it's the other way around, it's always kind of swooping out. Same thing with your stone, it's almost kicking the stone away. So with nice flat sheets of lath, if you apply it uh, on a good uh, sheathed wall, we just use regular exterior grade uh, roofing nails. In this case, just coil nails and a nail gun. And you nail like crazy. It, the code is eight inches on center, so this is roughly that. I try to hit the studs as much as possible and then make sure there is no chance for any sort of a bubble and I'll nail any extra spots that seem like there could be any bounce. 
and that gets that application taken care of. A lot of times you'll have this situation. Uh, sometimes you're just covering the foundation. You hit where the framing starts and you're good. In this situation here, they want to carry the stone up halfway up the wall. So we have to parge to fill this out. You'll notice down here, we've already started that process. In fact, it's brand new green material. We had to pull out, this is not, it's not bad construction or anything, it's just it happens. There's, some, there's always a variation between the house and the concrete uh, foundation. So what we've done here, we've done all the prep work, cleaned it all up, got it ready to go, and then we've added, this is straight 80 pound bags of mortar mix, slightly enriched, uh, and that's parged on. This is two coats, it may end up being three coats. As you finish the coat, you, you scrub it up so the next coat will uh, pick up on it, and that's still quite wet. Uh, so that brings it all into plane. Don't try to bring it into plane on the back of one stone. It's too much of a build per stone, and it'll get it sagging and you'll have a disaster. So once that's all on the same plane, we've got everything clean, we've got everything flat and ready, that's when we're ready to put the stone on. Thank you so much for watching. Check out all the other videos we have on masonry at the How To Headquarters. Please like and subscribe and uh, check out the other videos.